Hi there, welcome to Financial Mathematics. As a sort of Cassandra for what I told you last time in class, we are now recording our classes from home because of the coronavirus. You probably remember that I told you we were very likely underestimating the risk in the Netherlands, and so we are. Okay, so what I want to discuss with you today is a very important topic that goes under the name of Cameron-Martin theorem. The Cameron-Martin theorem is an essential tool for us. It will prove fundamental in the Black and Scholes and Merton framework because it's a theorem that allows us to build a strong connection between a Brownian motion with drift and a standard Brownian motion. In other words, we will see that if we have a Brownian motion with drift under a given uh, probability measure, that for us would be the physical measure, the market measure, then we can find another probability measure that later for us will be the risk neutral measure, but for the moment we don't know it. So another probability measure under which this original uh, Brownian motion with drift just behaves as a standard running motion. So we are able to remove the drift and we can link a running motion with drift and a standard running motion just by changing the probability measure on the measurable space we are considering. Now that will be very important because as I told you several times, for us dealing with the drift can be problematic because of the fact that the drift is strictly linked to the expectations of people and being able via a change of measure to get rid of this, rid of this drift is extremely useful for us. Now, as you can see, I'm recording from home. I don't have a very nice blackboard here. So what I will try to do is to substitute the blackboard with other instruments, with other tools. I will use our lecture notes, I will use my graphical tablet and other little machinery that I have available. I hope the class will be nevertheless interesting and useful for you and your feedback is highly appreciated. So let's start by recalling a little bit what we said last time. So you remember last time we introduced the exponential martingale that we called Z Xi T. Now this exponential martingale is now on your screen just using the lecture notes. This is the quantity we uh, dealt with last time. And you remember I told you that this quantity is always positive, this is trivial, given that it's the exponential of something, so it's always positive. It has expectation one, and in order to prove that, we can use the properties of the log normal expected value. Remember that, and please try to get familiar and acquainted with this log normal expected value, because it's very important. And so it's something that is always positive with expectation one, something that we can essentially use as a rather Nicodem derivative. And we also showed that on uh, this object, so this Z psi t is actually a martingale with respect to the physical measure. So the probability measure that we are starting with in our probability space and with respect to the filtration generated by what? Generated by the Brownian motion which is essentially within the exponential uh, martingale itself. Now what we can now say is that uh, using the exponential martingale and in particular but we can start by fixing a time instant and for us the, the cleverest uh, choice is to fix the maximum time instant that we can observe, so capital T, our final uh, maturity. By fixing this capital T we can 
use the quantity Z Psi capital T to essentially define a new probability measure P Psi starting from our initial measure that in the rest of the course will always be the physical measure P and that here in order to be a little bit more rigorous we will call P now P0 okay so when you see E um, subscript 0 it means that we are taking the expectation with respect to the initial probability uh, measure the one we started from it is for sure a very nice exercise and also very useful to verify that Xi as defined by using Z Xi capital T is equivalent to P0 or P now, our starting probability measure. This is something that I leave to you, but try to do that because it's always interesting to verify these kind of things. Once we have P0, so the starting probability measure, and P Xi, which is the new probability measure equivalent to P0 that we obtain via the rather Nicodem derivative Z Xi capital T, we can finally introduce the Cameron Martin theorem that links a Brownian motion with drift and a Brownian motion via the change of measure operation. Now, the statement of the theorem is as follows. Under peak psi, the process BT, that for us is a standard Brownian motion, has the same law as a Brownian motion with drift psi under P0. In other words, the stochastic process BT, the standard Brownian motion, has the same law under peak psi as the Brownian motion with drift BT plus psi T under P0. This result is extremely important for us. The proof of the theorem is not difficult. Uh, we will do that in two steps, but they are not actually uh, necessary. So if you want, you can just consider the second part of the proof. The first part is only meaningful to understand what's going on in a simplified environment. So we start by considering a random variable u, which is nothing more than the increment of a Brownian motion, of a standard Brownian motion, over the interval 0 capital T. So u is equal to b capital T, because b0 is equal to 0. And we also set t to be equal to 1. After that, we want to show what is the probability under the probability measure p psi of the event u being smaller than or equal to some value why? Now, to do that, we just substitute the definition of P Xi in terms of the expectation under uh, P0 of our rather Nicodem derivative and the indicator of the event, and by just following the step of the substitution and noticing that our quantity U is nothing more than a normally distributed random variable, we can go on and we actually find out that under P Xi, the random variable U equal to our standard Brownian motion B capital T or B1, because T is equal to 1, has the same distribution of the random variable B1 plus Xi under P0. So we actually have this uh, probabilistic equivalence for what concerns the laws of uh, normal and a normal plus a constant drift. In the second part of the proof, we want to consider more than one increment of the Brownian motion and of the Brownian motion with drift. So what we want to compare are the finite dimensional laws of the two processes. And since we know that for the two processes, the moment generating functions are defined, what we can do is just to have a look at the two moment generating functions and find out that by changing the measure, actually we can move from one to the other. And this implies that actually the increments of a standard Brownian motion on the peak psi have the same law as the increments of a Brownian motion with drift psi under P0. 
So we consider the increments of a standard Brownian motion and the increments of a Brownian motion with drift xi. What we then consider is the moment generating function of the standard Brownian motion under the probability measure p xi that you see now on your screen. As before, we just exploit our definition and in particular we look at the correspondence between the expectation under p xi and the expectation under p0. Substituting the radon nicotine derivative in the uh, definition and then collecting the terms, exploiting the properties of the exponentials and the sums, and once again exploiting, and this is very important, the expected value of log normally distributed random variables, we can easily verify that we can move from the moment generating function of a standard running motion under peak psi to the moment generating function of a Brownian motion with drift xi under p0. As I stressed before, this log normal expected value is fundamental and essentially in this proof what we do is to first compute the expected value and then after rearranging the terms we observe the computed expected value and we come back to its expectation form and this allows us to connect the two moment generating functions. An important corollary of the Cameron Martin theorem is the one that you see on your screen whose proof is left to you. Now this corollary tells us that we can link two different Brownian motion with drift. So it's not only the connection between a Brownian motion with drift and a standard Brownian motion but since a standard Brownian motion is nothing more than a Brownian motion with drift where the drift is equal to zero, we can generalize to the situation in which we have two different measures and the two different measures are essentially linked to two different drifts. So in a sense, the Cameron-Martin theorem is also very nice because in the case in which we can actually govern, we can actually model the subjective expectation of people with respect to the drifts, we can easily move from the subjective expectation of one guy to the subjective expectation of another guy. The problem is that we need to be able to, to do that. But if we assume that we know and our information is sufficient to do that, the Cameron-Martin theorem gives us the way in which we can move from one process to the other. And the trick is always the same. We define a new probability measure using the proper radon nicotine derivative that you see on your screen. That takes into consideration the differences in the drifts.